welcome back into my channel. I'm Meg and in today's video, I'll be taking you through the guided messages for May. I went ahead and pulled some tarot as well as meditated and I will present a few themes that came up this month. In general, we're moving into Taurus, which is the sign of groundedness and logic. They're very tactical. They like more routine and sort of are committed to their own comforts. They're also very strategic, empowering when it comes to financial abundance. And I think Taurus as an earth sign is a very sturdy, reliable energy that we are all probably so ready for. Taurus is also sort of gentle yet stubborn um, and a little more relaxed but persevering. So I think it's a really great, ambitious, like resilient sign that we can sort of harness that energy as we move through the month. Um, and I have to be honest. It, came to me a lot around the feelings of security and, you know, um, saving. And I think security in terms of saving, yes, financially, but also saving energy and literally what we're spending our time doing. But the first theme that came up was pretty clear and I pulled the death card in the tarot and I love it. It's Scorpio energy <laughs> and death is all about transformation and to me it's death of our old self it's the idea that is very intuitively connected to you know what just happened with the full moon but it's the death of ego and the birth of your soul taking over the real you and there's this sense of not holding back any longer and i find that this the word that came is emerge it's a merger. <laughs> it's a merger and acquisition of your head and your heart coming together to embrace all parts of you. It's like the real unveiling of you and your love and truth. So now is the time to really embrace every part of you, even the parts of you that are dying. And it is a slow, gradual process. Anyone going through transition can recognize this and let's face it guys we're human and life is all about change and transition but this one hits especially home because I've been knee deep in this for years and it's really about letting the old parts of yourself go the old thought patterns that no longer serve releasing the barriers that have held you back both in your mind and then physically like in our 3d experience something maybe you've been blocking yourself. And it feels really important that I mention here, it's a new kind of death. It's the letting go of keeping yourself small. Do you know what I mean? Or not taking up the space that you deserve or of not speaking your truth. This theme seems to come up again and hugely this month um, because Scorpio and this energy of this death card is tr is is like, I feel like layers, old, really sticky layers that have been shed. So I'm seeing a visual of when you glue a piece of paper together and it's still not set for a while. And it's in this in-between time that you have to sort of peel those layers apart to get to the real part of yourself that's ready to be sort of exposed to the world. And it's a little bit scary <laughs> to come out into a version of yourself that maybe other people haven't seen or maybe you haven't really celebrated yourself it's it's a new level of courage and confidence to just not hide from anything anymore and it's it's required if you want to grow and change and to bring in what's aligned for your best and highest good so moving through this to start to stand up in a new way in which the world is there for your to pick the ripe fruit, not seeing what's falling off the trees, not just grabbing what you're used to getting, but instead looking a little bit further and beyond of where you've kind of graduated and leveled up to. And I 
say this with such a loving heart, but this does require that we leave things behind, which is people, places, things, physical things, emotional things, codependent relationships that don't serve us, a job that no longer nurtures us, a home that may represent an old version or old relationship that we were, we were in at that time. It can be a myriad of things, um, fill in the blank, of course, but I think it's really exciting and it feels that to me, this is a new type of stepping into the next version of you. Okay, the second message that came in was really clear, and that's let light in. It's It sounds pretty straightforward. What is making you happy? Physical things, mental and emotional, on all levels, it's time to let more of the light in. The lightness, what makes you feel alive, what makes you feel joy, to open yourself up to a community and being in real life with others, feeling connected and a part of something larger. It's being in the warmth and actual sunlight, literally sunny weather and sunshine, being outdoors and nature as the weather's changing and witnessing a sunset, the times of the day that feels sacred and special to you where you want to take a moment to do your reflective practices at this time. So this feels really specific, but maybe it's at dawn or dusk, but we all resonate with certain periods of the day. For example, I am an early riser. I love to wake up early when it feels like the rest of the world is asleep to do some of my practices. And there isn't a lot of light just yet. And it sort of feels like this little moment in time for me to just feel that time is frozen before the day begins. So find when your window of light literally lets lets in and makes you feel the best. You know, there's a magic that happens like when the birds are chirping as I wake up early in my little beach town and it, it just feels like a treat to be alive. And this is that light, the subtleties, the little reminders of what it feels like to be on this earthly plane and in our bodies in this spiritual experience. But slowly moving towards the things that you'd like to bring more of into your life as well, because that is light. So for example, if health is a big important factor, maybe you begin taking a cooking class or joining a walking group, a way to feel connected to others and also to learn. Also, Light is other people's light as well. So open yourself up to receiving love and light and joy through your interactions with, you know, your loved ones and coworkers and neighbors and other people. Also though, as a caveat, be really mindful not to let low vibration people to cloud or dim your own light or the light around you, because it's always a balance we find doing this work. And I know that we are all light workers here. We have to keep our energetic spheres or bubbles pretty clear uh, as open pathways of divine energy. So as we move away from the dark clouds, literally, and to let more light in, and it's really as simple as that. It's a protective mode to shepherd us towards the goodness that we deserve. And also this light is a reminder that the light of what one day offers is the opportunity and the availability that you have to showcase your life's work in whatever way that is. Maybe it's taking one step towards writing the book that you're hoping to write or running your first mile if you want to train for a marathon. It's putting yourself out there for a job and reaching out to someone maybe as an informational interview to somebody who has um, a similar role that you're interested in. There's ways to let light in. And I think often we sort of 
close ourselves off from it, probably not on purpose, but because we're not being intentional that we're trying to receive and to bring in the light. So think of yourself as a light worker, which you are, and the ways, again, that you can just shepherd as much light in. And then on the flip side, the contrast to light, of course, is dark. And when it gets dark, allow yourself to harness all that beautiful light that you've taken in for the day and to rest and rejuvenate. Which leads me to the third theme. Our spiritual practices and daily rituals are going to be extremely important this month. Meditation especially, because, you know, this scorpionic energy that we've been in and now moving into Taurus, which is, you know, grounding earthly, it's sort of as we're moving between the veil or the contrast, like we must go within and also we must go deep. And there are moments to be quiet and retreat or spend time solo This month is a great time to offer yourself that, but it doesn't mean you have to be antisocial, but make sure to carve out ample time to sort of allow these daily rituals to nurture you in very real ways. Taking a deep breath, offering yourself an extra 15 minutes each morning, or or taking a walk in nature to reflect at the end of the day. It all adds up to an inner landscape that feels much more nourished and balanced. And that is the goal. Moving our bodies. Notice I like to use the word movement, not exercise. Movement feels so much more fluid. Also, any way that you can do this is wonderful if you are maybe immobile and can't do as much right now, um, simple stretches or doing Tai Chi or even just sitting on your yoga mat to do a little bit of movement goes a long way. Any Reiki or energy healing at this time would be extremely beneficial. And if you've never had it, it really can be life changing. It literally moves stagnant energy <laughs> out of your body and your joints. Um, I recently had a session um, with Radiant Reiki with Carol. I will leave her information below if you are local in Southern California, um, specifically San Diego. I had a session with Carol and my knees felt like a weight had been lifted off of them afterwards. And for those of you that know, I've had eight or nine knee surgeries throughout my volleyball career which was a wonderful part of my life. Um, It did leave some residue in the form of, you know, wear and tear on my body, but our body is our temple and we have to take care of it. So think of ways that you might just be able to up the ante a little bit, drinking more water, you know, sleeping a little bit more and um, moving slowly where possible. You know, lately I have been going to the beach with the intention to sort of just be in nature. And of course I love to take a walk and, you know, plant my feet into the sand. But when I go and I don't have a time frame or a specific outcome that I have decided before, it is so freeing. And I end up walking longer or I just take my time and In a culture and society where everything is based on never having enough time and always chasing, you know, the next project and how are we going to continue to follow our life's work if we're not moving and just doing, it's a very yang energy. So this is sort of a nod to our yin selves this month, like try to just harness a little bit more femininity and delicateness with yourself. And just be extra cautious and mindful in the way that you're moving through the world. Even on the freeway, I'll happily move over to the slow lane. I don't want to feel stressed out. That is me personally. And I don't mind listening to a podcast and potentially taking three minutes longer. 
it's these little things that do actually add up to making you feel like a little bit more in control. Um, and also if you're struggling with any types of meditation or even starting or wondering about meditation, please send me a message. I'm happy to personally walk you through it. It's not as intimidating as it sounds, and it is not a one size fits all approach. It's definitely the way that we have a relationship with ourself. And that's, that's the part that I think is the most beneficial. Okay. Moving on to the fourth theme, money and the tangible stability is pretty big this month. Um, our relationship to it and the way we use it, it's energy, right? Taurus is very good with money and they are savers and, you know, it makes the case for us to sort of reflect on how we're spending our money or budgeting. Um, and is there something else that's needed or are, are we being too frugal? Do we need to treat ourselves? Is that causing a blockage instead of flow? Um, you know, when we grasp onto anything way too tight, it's in hopes of a outcome that we're hoping for, but we know that we can't control that. So there is this need of, you know, realizing how much is available for free also, and that most of our happiness in life is not generated from money. There's so many things that we have access to. Number one, being in real life with the people that we love, laughing, having a conversation, just feeling the presence of another human that we are, our heart space is connected to. And, you know, taking the time to be together, it's, it's really the small things and the simple things for me, getting up in the morning and being able to just smell the coffee as I'm making it and to hear the birds and to slow down and appreciate all that this earthly plane has to offer. There's so much that we can really become aware of that doesn't have to do with um, external factors that we obtain through money. But of course, <laughs> we need it. But things external to ourselves are like band-aids. They cover up what's really happening deep within our souls. And, you know, it's, it's easy to go and just put our money into things that we think will make us feel better when in reality, um, the work that's required is what we're, we're here doing, which is strengthening our inner landscape. Um, that being said, of course, money is needed and it's a necessity, but let's think of it with a mantra. I'm so grateful that money is always available and plentiful for me in my life. And just having a, a safety, space in our head that we realize it's always going to be provided because we are always protected and there is such a larger energy um, at hand but also I should note that money is really tied to our self-worth in many ways and I'd like us to each <laughs> tear that apart and to to untangle that mentality because we are not what our bank accounts represent. We just aren't. We are what our intentions are. We are how we operate in the world and how we treat other people. We are the energy that we offer to both ourselves and to the world at large. And the more that we hone in on our life's craft and our personal mission and our purpose, all of that energy and that abundance will be coming back around to us. And it's really an interesting one, but it came up really big. And I think it's not a surprise. It's a little, it's a little different right now in the world with inflation and gas prices and you know the housing market it's it's a little bit more challenging and people are tightening their belts a bit to try to to gain a sense of stability and 
um, just know that um, you are working on the most pristine part of your own stability by being here and by rooting into your own inner work because when we are strong on the inside and stable there's no option other than the vibration of that to emanate into our physical life and everything that we touch okay moving on to our final thought or theme it just came in sort of as like a and don't forget to mention this like a little check it doesn't have quite as much weight but it was this aspect of don't dwell on the past it's over yesterday's over last year is over you know the parts of ourselves that may have been a certain way be it really positive or really negative it's the past is over and this is a message that keeps coming through but we have to continue to take action and just keep going you know we just wrapped up the eclipse season and we're on the way physically to warmer days and in the summer may flowers are blooming and you are opening up to new possibilities and you know don't be so laser beam focused on how you did things in the past it's time for a new lens this lens is different because your perspective is different and you've changed so be aware of your reaction to things or other people maybe how conversations or experiences shape you and things will fall away as i mentioned um, because you're growing and you're different and things are not going to feel like they fit anymore and that's part of this process as we sort of circle back around to you know the death of an old version of ourselves as we continue to evolve, there's parts of ourselves that, you know, maybe go away or they're just not as important. We have to embrace the change and you have to allow yourself to sort of attune, you know, the, the guitar strings to what feels most aligned with you at where you're at right now as we approach May. Um, and just know that change and newness is the only constant. And if you're willing, which I'm sure you are, to put in the work, to just keep on keeping on, that is really an art. And it is that discipline and consistency that will take you to where you're wanting to go. And my last thought is this, failing forward is absolutely my mantra and what i mean by that is if you've taken risks and you feel like hindsight's 2020 and maybe you, you don't really agree with something you did in the past or a, you know a decision that you took it's okay we we have to take risks and we have to go after things and we have to take leaps towards what lights us up and oftentimes you know have i failed many times um have i done things that i look back on and think wow i probably would have handled that differently absolutely but what i find is that the more that we trip and fall and we take the steps because we're passionate and we're going after what we want it just takes us closer to where we're meant to be. And I promise you guys that you will look back and you will really have such gratitude that you took those paths because it brought you to where you are today. And that is what I'm going to leave you with because there's a lot of big energy coming out of this. And I think some of you are ready for a really big, big change and that might be one that you're bringing on yourself i don't feel like it's a tower moment coming from an external place it's you deciding the tower moment is here because you are simply different and that is a beautiful thing so i hope that these messages resonated with you for may i'm wishing you all of the best and my blessings through the month of course i will be back soon 
please drop me a line or feel free to message me with any thoughts or ideas. And I look forward to being with you all very soon. Okay, take care.